Hello, and welcome to episode 12 of the Sunnydale Diaries, a podcast where I, Sean, along with my very good friend, Melanie, Hi. watch and discuss every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And we have made it through season one with this episode, Whew. Prophecy Girl. Wow. So this episode is about prophecy. Mm-hmm. Prophecy and uh, is it immutable? Or is it getting around it? And also about apocalypse and the signs of the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Right? Prophecy. Do you believe in prophecy? I do. I mean, I think there's such a thing as, as prophecy and fate. Well, those are two different things. Well, yeah. Prophecy yeah. is being able to see the future or being able to tell the future through a text or something. Do you think there's such a thing out there? Like the Bible? The Bible would be prophetic, right? It would, yeah. Um, I think I think it's possible. Hmm, interesting. What about you? Um, I don't know. I used to be a believer in that kind of stuff, like being able to see the future. But I always think if somebody really could see the future... Then they'd be able to change it. I don't know. I don't know that the world would be this, in the state that it's in now. Well, but there's also, I mean, I know a lot of, like, when you read about prophecies, like, they're not specific. Like, well, like horoscopes? Well, you know, I mean, or just like any, like, lore about prophecies. Like, you know, it's not, it's not black and white. Like, yeah. even what happened within, in this episode. Yeah. Um, so... I think it's possible, but it's not like, you know, on March 15th, Melanie is going to wear a blue sweater. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. know, in the future, you will be surrounded by teal. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not specific. Mm -hmm. Um, All right. I got you. All right. And you mentioned fate. Do you think that's a thing? Fate? I like, well, I like the idea of it, at least like more like in like the Greek mythological sense. All right, so so I I know I've mentioned one of the books before on this, but there's a series, uh, Incarnations of Immortality by Piers Anthony, Mm -hmm. um, where he basically personifies things like death, time, nature, and one of them is fate. Uh, And it draws on mythology. There's three aspects of fate, one that spins the thread of life, one that measures it, one that cuts it. So, like, the spinning is, you know, starting off your life. The measuring is, you know, your destiny, everything you're going to run into. And then a tropos is the third one who cuts cuts your threads. I I like that idea. I don't know that I necessarily 100% believe in it. Mm. But there's there's a possibility. You think you could change your fate? Yes. Mm. I I do. I, I think maybe there are some, you know... Like it, it's like it's like a path. Mm-hmm. You can choose to stay on that path, or it's like a choose your own adventure book. Yeah, it's like two roads diverging in a yellow road, wood, <laughs> and you know you you choose one. Um, I like going back to prophecy. There was a time in high school where I had a friend who ran away from home, mm-hmm. and she was gone. Like she was missing. Didn't know. No one knew where she was or anything. I was walking to work and thought to myself, you know, I really miss this person. I hope she's okay. Five seconds later, she comes running around the corner and gives me a big hug. Oh. So, you know, when stuff like that happens, it makes me kind of believe in in prophecy a little bit. Hmm. Have you ever had any unusual experiences like that? Surely I have. I used to be a big believer in um, the universe and the power of the universe and synchronistic events. I think it was um, was Celestine Prophecy. Did you ever read that book, The Celestine Prophecy? I believe I have, yes. Um, and that was a lot about that, like shaping the universe through your, well, like we talked about before, you know, through perception and reality and perception. And um, I don't know about prophecy. I don't know. I don't know if I believe that. And fate, I don't know if I believe in fate either, because if you can change your fate, then it's not really fate, because fate is a predetermined outcome. So that's kind of 
intimidating and uh, <laughs> scary to me, the idea of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> that you really have no control. Yeah, and I, I think, I think <laughs> my own opinion, you know, it's, it's that it's a mix. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe there are some things that have been, like, set, but you control how you react to them and those choices can change it. It is kind of a, it really, if you think about it, if, if you uh, want to think about fate as unchanging and you're going to arrive at your fate either way it's kind of liberating it doesn't really matter what you <laughs> it do it doesn't though. matter what you do <laughs> just live your life and have fun yeah. <laughs> uh and then apocalypses yes apocalypse have you ever felt like the world is ending yeah uh let's see in fifth grade there was a uh, something about the planet's alignment i don't know what was happening something astronomical was happening but i remember um everybody in school was saying yeah the planets are going to align and we're going to go spinning into the sun and this is it and on the radio they were saying stuff about it they were kind of joking of course they were joking but in my little fifth grade brain i went home i was crying i was like oh my god we're all gonna die um of course that did not happen and then also um i think i watched a documentary on hbo about nostradamus Probably around the same time in my life. That was kind of scary to me. and But, you know, the world keeps spinning. And, I don't know. George Carlin had a really good bit about it, about uh, how we always say, you know, the world's going to end. No, the world's not going to end. I mean, we might end. Yeah. <laughs> Mankind might end. We might blow ourselves up. But, yeah. I don't know. Um, it's kind of depressing to think about, so I try not to. That's fair. I, did you I ever heard... watch that movie, uh, The Day After Tomorrow? I did. Oh, you did? Yeah. How old were you when you watched that? Uh, I mean, very young, but I remember oh. watching it. Yeah. My parents would not let me watch that. Uh, oh, my gosh. That's was, some heavy stuff. It was a different time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was 15 years later. <laughs> <laughs> when I was in high school slash early college... Um, the people, the group of friends I was around were really big into the book, The Stand by Stephen King. Oh, such a good book. Right? Yes. And they like believed it. They were like, this, no, this book is prophecy. <laughs> like, this is really going to happen. Stephen King knows something somehow. Mm. <laughs> they were like, this is the plan. When it happens, <laughs> we're going to go. Cause of course we all believe we were going to be the ones left. Of course. Right. And we're going to go to the radio station and we're going to broadcast. They were going to play a Depeche Mode song. And that was the signal <laughs> to meet. Uh, yeah. Apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, and I think if, if it were to happen, I could see it happening that way. Some virus, you know, mutates and then just, you know, everybody's gone. Some stupid government Created virus yeah. gets out somehow. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Yeah, something dumb like that. Yeah, Resident Evil. Which I yeah, that's you. That's not me. I'm not into that. Those movies. So it's exactly what you just described. Oh, <laughs> which at is least it stand. starts yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's let's move on to uh, a more happy topic. Okay. The last episode of season one. Yes, Prophecy Girl. Yeah. Yep. That's where we are. For, I mean, I won't get into it in detail, but like for a season finale, what did you think? I will tell you this. At some point, I stopped taking notes and I was just watching the episode. Ah. So it must have been entertaining. Okay. And th this, it was written and directed by by Mr. Whedon. Oh, yeah? Will Whedon? Yeah. No, Joss Whedon. <laughs> oh. Not, not Will Whedon. <laughs> So, I mean, he doesn't write and direct every single episode, but you know, he oh, did. Oh, this the, is one, huh? Yeah, he did the pilots, uh, definitely, and then this one, and I, I, I think you could tell the ones that he did because I do think they are they're different, okay, than the other ones, okay. So we start off on the bronze. We start off with a previously on. Oh, you're right. You're right. And then there's no creepy voiceover guy. No, no, no. yeah, just just him saying previously on Buffy yeah. the Vampire Slayer. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, so if you know, you're seeing that for the first time, you'd have no idea what's going on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you know, there's just these two people talking in a club. Yep. Club for 18-year-olds. Actually, not even 18. What yet. is this club? <laughs> Xander's practicing on Willow. I feel so bad for Willow. I know. She's I like, mean, not really, but you know. She's looking just like so love-struck yeah. at him where he's just like... Using her to practice asking out. Tale as old as time. Yeah. Clueless guy. 
Jerk. Doesn't even see what's in front of him. Yeah. Would you date me? <laughs> I mean, at least he realized that was, you know, maybe not the best choice of No, words. so then he moves on to, it's a chance for mating. <laughs> for us to <laughs> mate. Mating, mating ritual. <laughs> And we have another dance. We just had the... Is it not the same dance? Well, I think it happened already because... Oh, maybe it didn't. Because I was going to say because know. Cordelia already, you know, won the May Queen. I mean, I guess at the end of the last episode, they were all, she was in her white dress. They were going off They were going off to the dance. That's, yeah, okay. So then this was a second dance. A yeah, I guess. Dance. It's a lot of dances. They got these, stuff to dance about, I guess. These crazy California dance. kids. Yep. And then we, we, they, somebody, I think Xander asks, you know, what's Buffy doing? Or Willow asks, and, you know, the usual. And then we, <laughs> you know, we, we, we cut to uh, her fighting with the vampire, a slow motion fall to the ground. Yeah, we're just kind of getting it from everybody's perspective, aren't we? Mm-hmm. Like we see Cordelia making out with a guy in the car and I thought slow mo was... fight. And yep. The... I thought it was Mitch from the previous episode. It's not. She had moved on. What a whore. Yeah. She's wow. <laughs> <laughs> she moved on to Kevin. I can't keep track. Uh, I, this vampire did have good makeup. He did not look bad. Yeah? Yeah. Well, they're starting to rake in some of that some of that cash. Exactly. And uh, during the slow-mo, we get one of Buffy's, I wrote out a hot look. Where she's just eyeing him like you're dead. And it's just you hot. love that, huh? I love it. I, I'm going to do a montage okay. one day of, of all, all the her hot, hot looks. Of all the hot looks. Okay. It brings you right back to that one from Wolfpack. Oh, you love that. It's hot. Um, she kills him. Yeah. With some special effects. We're almost to season two. The special effects are getting better. Did Did you not think it was better? I don't know. Uh, and uh, and then we go. Giles is having his tea and reading the codex mm-hmm. aloud. Mm-hmm. I mean, Giles is smart enough to know you don't ever read these books aloud. <laughs> That's true, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously he's not. Well, I mean, he he did just you know get his ability to read back pretty <laughs> That's recently right. from after nightmares. nightmares. <laughs> so you know, that's how you start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's got to read out loud. Uh, yeah, the master shall rise in the slayer. My God! And then there's an earthquake. Yeah. Did he bring about the earthquake no, by no, reading no, the, no, the book? No, so. it just happened. I think Coincidental. It just happened. Yep. Okay, all right. And then I see Xander and Willow run under under the stairs. Should you go under the stairs? Under the I don't know. Giles went into the door. Which the doorway. I know you're supposed to do that. Yes. Under the stairs. I don't know. Have you ever been in an earthquake? Just like on a cruise, like those. You've never had like tremors when you're on a cruise. No. Oh man. Like, every cruise I've been on, there's a lot. Really? I mean, not, like, major, but it's definitely, oh, you feel it moving. Oh, okay. Um, and then, like, nothing very severe, but I've definitely been in a few. Okay. I've, uh, I've been in earthquakes when I lived in California. Oh. Uh, Quite a few of them. How was that? It was interesting. It wasn't, it was disturbing. Right. I remember sitting on my living room couch during one and watching my patio balcony wall kind of yeah. undulate like a wave. You know? oh, I was like, yeah, okay. I like no. And then I, one, when I was driving to work, that was kind of interesting, you know, cause the road was kind of moving, but, um, yeah, I think, and by the time I figured out what it is, it's over. It's like, right. Oh, okay. Carry on my day. But yeah. Yeah. It wasn't anything like the, the earthquake they just had. Right. On yeah. That show. was, that was yeah. pretty severe. Yeah, it was. The master is happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that can't be good. No. Do you, do you want to do the impression, or should I do Go it? Go ahead, you do it. Glory, glory! <laughs> He's very happy about this. And then he just like kind of turns. He's very talk. reverent. Yes, isn't yes, he? He is reverent. Because later on, when he's like, "Yeah, my God," he's like, "My God." Yep. Very reverent. And then he turns to Colin. He's like, "What do, what do you think? Five point one?" <sighs> that was supposed to be funny, right? I thought that was supposed to be funny. Okay. Yeah. We get some credits. And then Buffy walking into the library. Yep. The damage looks fairly structural. How would she know that? <laughs> She's the slayer. One um, girl in all the world that can assess the earthquake damage at a glance. Yeah. And Giles is very out of sorts. Yeah, he's not listening to her. No. She's trying to you know, get his sympathy. I broke a nail. <laughs> I'm wearing, wearing a press, press on. on. <laughs> <sighs> but yeah, see, he's definitely distracted by something. Yep. She says she has to face her terrible fate. He's like, what? Just biology. <laughs> we get something's up with him. Then we move on to uh, 
Willow, Xander, and Buffy out in the courtyard again. Yep. This is where Xander's going to make his move. He is, yeah. He sends Willow away after she says, it's the computer age. Nerds are in. <laughs> That's right. They're still in, right? Yes. They're still in now. Yes. Yeah, I was going to say 25 they years are. later, they're yep. still in. So then Xander wants to talk to Buffy. Yeah. And they will go over to the bench because he wants to sit down. And he says to the guy that's on the bench, hey, move. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, leave. Yeah, leave. Yeah. Leave. And the guy does. I'm like, screw you, buddy. I was here first. Right. It's like, you know, remember when the, the, the really mean guys were doing that? Yes. In the pack? Yes. Like, well, you know, he did become a hyena like them. So that's true. He that's has probably, it in him. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, he confesses his love. And he gets friend zoned. He does. And you, like, you could, she feels bad about saying it, I think. I think. I thought she handled it very well. Yes. I have to say. Because what do you do in that situation? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, if you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. Right. Better than leading them on. That's right. She was very clear. Mm-hmm. I don't. Yeah. You either feel it or you don't. Well, I don't. I don't. Yeah. And then he uh, he says something really crappy. Yeah, he kind of is a jerk about it, isn't he? Yeah. A guy's got to be dead to make time with you. <sighs> Ouch. Yeah. So that was harsh, and it was. And he's not wrong, though. <laughs> but still. <laughs> I, no, I thought, you know, she handled it okay. Yeah. Okay, so then we go back to the library. Right. And guess who's back? Uh, b- before she's back. Oh. He's on the phone. Oh, yeah. G- he's on Giles. The phone. They said, hello, this is Giles. Rupert Giles. That's, he did say that. Since we talked a few episodes yes. ago about his first What's name. What's his first name? Yes. And, and it's not Mr. Yes. I, I did go through and check the script for each episode in season one. In I think it was episode eight is the first time they mentioned Rupert. Oh, okay. So they it's not like they said it a lot right. before it. But yes, then who who walks in? The freaking techno pagan. Everybody's favorite techno pagan. She's been surfing the net, <laughs> sending the globals, sending the globals. <laughs> Some weird stuff going on, boiling lakes. Mm-hmm. A boy born with his eyes facing <laughs> inward. I, I was like. <laughs> Oh, does she mean like facing in, like the whites are out and the, the color is inside his head? That's how I interpret it. Oh, that. I thought she meant like cross-eyed. And I was like, <laughs> after all the stuff you just said and you finish with a cross-eyed kid, that is like not a big deal. Come on, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> and a kid was born with a lisp. <laughs> All right. Well, that definitely seems more uh, apocalyptic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And a cat giving birth to litter of snakes. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah that well, one. okay. Yes. She started off with that. Yeah, yeah. That's good. But yeah, compare that to a kid that's cross-eyed. That's not a big deal. Yeah. There's a cra- crazy monk. Yes. Who's emailing Bro- brother Luca. Luca. Yes. Yeah. Global mailings. Globals. Globals. That, like, was that a thing? Like on the BBS? No. 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 Globals. There's no globals. Okay. You email the person on the, on the modem that's five miles down the street, maybe. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Cordelia needs Willow's help with the sound system. Yes. Okay. So this school dance prom, whatever it is, uh-huh. is being held at the bronze. At the bronze. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we did. We've discussed proms are sometimes held in other places. Yeah. Not at a dingy club where there's a buttery croissants and tea. I mean, at like nice hotels. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... not not the hotel or the the club where they have to have the cockroach uh, <laughs> the fumigation the party. fumigation party. That's not where I want to have my prom. That's fair. All right, <laughs> I'll give you that. But that's where it is. All right, and they can't use the bronze sound system. Right. So she's asking, to be nice to Willow. Yes. Or at least you know, fake being nice. Yes. Yeah. Xander's moping. So he says, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home, lie down, and listen to country music. The music of pain. The music of pain. Yeah. I think, uh, then he's like, I have a great idea. We can go together to Willow. No, and she she's not down. having it. No, rightly so. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm glad she stood up for herself. Um, at some point, Willow says something about what are these, um, high. How does she say it? The word is hijinks." But she calls it like high jinx. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, oh, and then um, somebody turns on the faucet. Yeah, Buffy. Bleed. Buffy turns on it, the, and there's blood coming yeah, out of the bleeding faucet. Bleeding sink. That's pretty good. disgusting. That is gross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then um, 
Oh, so we find out that it was uh, Giles was talking to on the phone was Angel. Yep. And Angel is meeting with Giles, and they're talking about the prophecy. Yep, in the Pergament Codex. Yes. And the prophecy is that Buffy is going to face the Master tomorrow, and she's going to die. And I have to say, this is one of those uh, little tricks that they play. I kind of predicted this one, that they say somebody's going to die, but they like make a little little twist where, yeah, you, they die for, you know, like a minute. Right. Then they come back. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's like how many more seasons of this show? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Buffy overhears it. Yep. And she freaks. She freaks. And, you know, again, you know, think about it. She's 16 years old. She says that. Yeah. Know, I don't want to die. I'm 16. Uh, that's. She says, I'm out. Yeah. And you Quit. Can't, no, you can't play. She yanks that cross off, off of her neck and says, I'm out. Yeah. Throw some books at Giles. <laughs> you know, again, rightly so. No, yeah. You know, it's like, what good are you? Yeah. You know, I'm the one going out to die. That's right. So then we get to Xander laying in bed listening to Patsy Cline. Oh, that's I, what it is. I have to say, I did laugh out loud when they showed that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Willow uh, called him up, and uh, he just picks up the phone, plops it right back down. Yep. Did you see it was a rotary phone? No. Yeah. I did notice somebody was talking about on a princess phone earlier. Princess phone was the old cradled. Oh, yeah. The, the yeah, one yeah. everybody had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Buffy's looking through old photos, yeah. photo album. Do you have any photo albums? I, I do, because I was just talking about it with my husband recently, because yeah. he's trying to clean up some space, mm-hmm. and he said we should get rid of those. I'm like, absolutely not. I know. I was just looking at my photo albums on the shelf the other day, and I was thinking, man, that is kind of a lost thing. You know, everybody's photos are now in the cloud and on their phones and stuff, and and in a way, I don't think they have as much meaning because there's so many of them. Yes. Like, when do you ever really go looking through your photos on your phone? I really Cloud don't. photos. I, I know. I mean, once in a while, I use Google Photos once in a while. It just, like, randomly puts together a montage. Yeah. Like, it sent me one of me and you a couple of days ago. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah. I know. It's kind of sad. Yeah. My husband, he um, he took photos of all of his photos in his pho- in his albums. So you could get rid of the albums. Yeah. But I'm with you. I kind of like having the albums. Anyway. Yeah. She's be reminiscing, looking through the photo albums. Joyce comes in, and Joyce trying to be a mom. Yeah. And Buffy wants to get away. She's yeah. She's going away for the weekend. Yeah. But. <laughs> nope. The damn gallery. gallery. She, you know, she's got taxes to pay. <laughs> that is true. She's got, like, you know, people are on her trail. <laughs> and she's fighting with the IRS. <laughs> she's fighting with the IRS. She, she can't leave. Maybe the FBI agent from the last episode were really in Sunnydale Maybe. because of her tax because evasion. Her own, trying to find Joyce. But yeah, no, nope, can't get away. The gallery's open. Um, and then she tells Buffy about uh, that Buffy should just go. Go have fun. And, you know, I went by myself once to a dance. And Buffy asked her, well, how was it? Well, it was bad for the first hour. But then I met your dad. He was there with a date. Joyce is just not a good person. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because he was there. Almanzo was there. <laughs> That's the name I was trying to remember. Almanzo was there with a date. Laura and then Engelbar. Joyce, and then Joyce, yeah, just goes in there and is like, hey, you know, breaks up his date. I'm going to marry and divorce this man. <laughs> I'm going to break you up. <laughs> he could have had a good life with that girl. That is true. Joyce. There, there's... Ruins, we'll, we'll, ruins relationships. We'll see if some more, more of tax Joyce. evasion. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a good scene in between Buffy and Joyce at the end of season two. Okay, I quote it often. Oh yeah, yeah. Joyce did do something nice though. She got Buffy the dress. She got her the dress. It's not a bad dress. No, no. I pretty. thought it, when they first showed it, I thought it was like a jumpsuit. <laughs> well, no, because I, I was like. How's she got? Because obviously I know she's gonna end up fighting in that dress. Right. I thought, ooh, it would be good if it were like you know, like wide leg, like palazzo pants kind of thing, you know, mm. where she could like do kicks and stuff. Right. Not that it being a dress is gonna stop her from doing kicks and stuff, because she's Buffy and she does that. That's it. Okay. We uh, we're back in school. Willow and Cordelia walking down the hallway. Yep. Head to the AV room. That's what it was, the AV room. Mm-hmm. I was like, what kind of room is this where kids are just sitting around watching TV in school? The AV room. I guess. They were taking part they in... Had, they were having their free... Yes. ...in the AV room. Taking part in audio and visual activities. Yes. And they open the door and they're all dead. Yes. It's bloody. Yeah, there's even a handprint on the 
I, TV. I, I do think that that image of the, the bloody handprint on the TV and yeah. then two of the three little pigs dancing around, that's, yes. that's freaky. That was a little creepy. That one sticks with me. Yeah? Yeah. I thought that was a good decision. It was a pretty gnarly scene, I do have to say. Mm-hmm. And then Buffy's in the dress. So wait, okay. who who did that? Who? Just vampires. Oh, just I vampires? Yeah, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, okay, so go ahead. Um, Buffy's in the dress, she's checking herself out. Yeah. I don't understand this. Joyce comes running in. There's something on the news, Willow. Well, so um, Willow obviously was very upset, mm-hmm. traumatized by that. There's something on the news about the massacre at your school. Oh, the Navy Massacre Willow of Falls. the Week. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And, and you have to go see Willow. Yeah. And what Willow said something when she was describing it. She's like, they, it was our world, but then when I opened the door. It wasn't their world It anymore. was their world, and they and they had, had fun. fun. Yeah. No. I don't know. I don't, I mean, that was a little creepy. Yeah. That was like. I think this is really like the first time, other than the harvest, and we already have discussed, like the harvest was a very clean massacre. Yes. Like this was the first one really where it's like a yeah, bunch it was of dead a mess. people. Yeah. 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 And then, you know, I actually meant to start off this episode by saying, Melanie, I like your dress. Because <laughs> Willow says that to Buffy, and then we're off to the Jello Church. Yes. I'm not sure why, because all I wrote was Jello Church. <laughs> We're just catching up with the master, and, and he knows he's going to get out of the jail church. Okay. All right. So then Giles and Jenny um, are in the library, and uh, they're talking about how they, nobody can find Brother Luca. Luca. And even though she did send out a global. Oh, what? Good. Jenny, are you talking about? <laughs> a global. You never I had a global? sent out a global. All right. And then um, Buffy comes in, and she says she's going to face the master after all. Yes. Yeah. And Giles says, nope, I'm going to do it. But before that, yeah, we find out, or they find out, that the anointed was not pork and beans because <laughs> of the, the, the quote from the Bible. Oh, right. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, yeah. the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the young and the fatling together with a child to lead them. Yep. And I had to look up what a fatling was. It's, it's a young animal that has been fattened in readiness for slaughter. I don't think I've ever heard fatling ever before this. I've heard duckling. I've tall. Oh. <laughs> but they're not fattened up. No. Um, but yeah, but then Giles, I'm going to fight the master. Oh, Giles. I mean, he's... Giles, you wouldn't last two seconds. You get knocked out every episode. But he means well. Yes, he does. But yeah, Buffy's like, no, you're not. Yeah. Boom. Take a shot. Clocks him. Clocks him right Giles in his face. Knocked out. Yep. Yep. And this is like one of the lines that have stuck with me over the years. You know, when he wakes up, you know, think of something cool, tell him I said it. Yep. Yeah. And the anointed. Oh, yeah. So Colin. she goes outside with her crossbow. Uh, and Colin's out there yeah. waiting for her. Help me. Help me. She says, I know who you are. Yeah. How does she know who he is? Has she met him yet? No, but I think she's, you know, she's expecting a kid. And, okay. you know, and he's standing there as soon as she goes outside. All right. And he didn't have his, his reverb voice. No, that it's was, that was good. Yeah. He just takes his hand and off they go. And he literally leads her. Yeah. To the Jello Church. Mm-hmm. So um, then they're in the library again. And Xander is like, "What? we have to help her. Yep, yep. And he mans up. He does. He's like, I know where to go. Mm-hmm. How does he know where to go, Sean? How does he know where Angel lives? I mean, we do not see every waking moment. Was Angel moment. just renting an apartment downtown? I think so, yeah. He pays rent and yeah. stuff and just... And we, we only get little snippets into their lives. Right. At some point, Buffy must have, take, must have taken him on a tour. And this is where his apartment is. <laughs> this is where he stores the blood. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, we get a locutus of Borg. Reference. Yes. So again, uh, last episode we had a Tiberius. Uh, what was it? Tiberius manifest. Manifest. So I don't know. Uh, I'm in the middle of watching the first season of Picard right now. Yeah. Where Locutus is very, uh, very prominent. Oh so yeah. Okay. I, I yeah. extra appreciated yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Xander goes off to Angel's apartment. Yep. And you know, and they're both gonna you know whip him out, see which one's bigger. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And uh, they're off to go save Buffy. Yes. 
Um, back in the library, Jenny Giles Willow are trying to figure out where is the Hellmouth. Mm-hmm. Where's it going to open up? Yep. Then we go underground with uh, Colin and Buffy. Colin drops her off in the carpool line, walks away, and down she goes. Down she goes. Yep. And uh, her dress is still looking pretty uh, spotless. It is pristine. Yes. She's trying with the crossbow to get the master. He catches that crossbow uh, yeah. arrow pretty easily. Yeah. Nice shot. Uh, Xander and Angel walking through the, the sewers. Yep. You're looking at my neck. <laughs> Stop looking at my neck. <laughs> <laughs> that was cute. Uh, and then the master sneaks up on Buffy. Yep. He gets her. Yep. She's bitten. Yep, he bites her. And then he just drops her. No, he drops a mannequin. <laughs> it is an obvious mannequin into the mud puddle, which doesn't matter because that dress, man, that dress is Scotch Garden no, to hell or something. Uh, Joyce probably had some Scotch Guard at the gallery. <laughs> she it down. Yeah, that's it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so Buffy's dead. But not really. I mean, she is. At this moment. Yeah. But then Angel and, and uh, Xander come in and Xander says, but she's drowned, so there's a chance. Mm-hmm. That's like a little footnote in, you know, life and death situations. If it's drowning, there's a chance. There's a chance. Yeah. Um, and Angel says, well, you have to do the CPR because I don't have any breath. As he's panting. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's just not necessary. Like, they could have just had Xander shove him out of yes. the way and start doing yes, it. Yes, they could have. And, you know, Xander is doing those compressions. He's doing neck compressions. Yes, he's going to honor trachea. <laughs> trachea compressions. Not good. No. And in the middle of all that, Jenny and Willow are outside going to the Drive to the bronze, because that's where they think the vampires are going. And Nope. Nope. They're headed their way. That's good. Save time. They mm-hmm. don't have to go. The vampires come into them. Mm-hmm. And then there's Cordelia in her car. Yep. Get in. Yep. And they head to the library in the car. They drive <laughs> through the school. That seems like the school might collapse if they did that. Can you imagine what the insurance must cost for that school? I'm telling you. I don't know how the school isn't shut down by, by <laughs> someone at this point. I mean, dead Before kids, now. invisible people, driving through. Cars driving through. It's a mess. Yes. Nests in the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, the Jello Church is no more. He broke through the Jello. Yep. He's out. He's out. Yep. So they, uh, Cordelia and Jenny and Willow get back to the library. Vampires coming. Coming yep. in through the stacks. They're coming in every which yep. way. And then we get some tentacles. The worst. <laughs> one lone tentacle. Uh, at first I was like, that's it. That's the season one tentacle allotment. <laughs> one little tentacle. But no, then they, they bust out with like the big worm worm monster thing. Yeah, yeah. With many heads. Yeah. Chomping. That's pretty gross looking. It was, it was. It wasn't bad. I just read in the trivia on IMDb that uh, the practical effect was that uh, for that was that they had each worm tentacle thing had a person in it mm. it was like a giant life-size puppet okay interesting cool they couldn't do cgi just not the first time we've had puppets yeah. we had the hyena puppets actually and and sid we had sid yeah yeah Lots sid was the best one yes yeah i agree with that yeah uh buffy feels strong so why does she feel strong because he bit her um, like so she got some of his power or maybe he's being being brought back i don't know i don't have a good answer for all that. right but she feels strong okay that's good and she is she knows where to go <laughs> yep she's headed back to the school using the buffy theme music buffy theme music the power walk yep she just knocks a vampire it bothered off me they couldn't get better music oh that they just recycled i thought that was lazy okay all right fair sorry it's all right you're entitled to your opinion thanks it's wrong but <laughs> Um, Buffy heads up to the roof. Mm-hmm. Master's there. Mm-hmm. They have their little fight. Yep. He says, where's your quips? Where's your jibes? Mm-hmm. And she just sauces him into the library. She, that's the last jibe. Yeah. If you sow whatever for hell, go there. Yeah, you sow yant about hell. That's there. right. Go there. Oh, we miss Fruit Punch Mouth. Oh, yeah. You have Fruit Punch Mouth. <laughs> like, what? And she just decks him. <laughs> I like that one. So, okay, so she throws him. He lands on the big piece of wood spike thing, whatever. Mm-hmm. 
and he disintegrates except his skeleton. Yes. Don't all the other vampires like totally disintegrate? They do. I have to think that because he is so old, his body has gone through some kind of physiological change. Oh, okay. Has he gone through a physiological change? He has. Okay, all right. You know, people go through changes as they, you know... Reach puberty, maybe Quantum vampires. Quantum mechanics. Yeah, maybe okay. vampires have like a second puberty. Okay. <laughs> and for that, their skeleton solidifies. Okay. That's what we're going with. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, he's uh, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's dead. And that, just him dying causes the Hellmouth to close. Yes. Right? Yeah. Because the prophecy has been... Nullified. Uh, nullified. Oh, good word. Okay, mm. nullified. All right. And uh, yeah, so the, the puppets... Go back down into yep. their hole. Yep. And I guess all the other vampires just walked away. I guess. <laughs> they go, like, oh. Guess not. Oh. And, and Angel walks in, the master? And they're like, well, obviously he's dead. There's a big skeleton right there. <laughs> like, come on, dude. <laughs> and uh, they decide. Should we go to the dance? They go off to the prom. And she says, because I got all pretty. Mm-hmm. My dress is still pure white, not a mark on it. Mm-hmm. Let's go. And Angel, I didn't mention this before, you know, the master said he liked her dress. Yes. And then Angel says. Like your dress. Yep. So you have heard it. Yep. And we are, we are at the end. That's it. We have made it through season one. Yep. Um, I will say about this episode, I thought the fight with the master was a little anticlimactic. Hmm. I mean, he's the big baddie. Yeah, yeah. But I guess. Yeah, she seemed to kill him pretty easily. Well, she was strong. Yeah, for some reason, yeah. yeah. It was okay. Okay. <laughs> right. And what happened to Colin? We'll find out. All right. I, I, was, I, I don't think it's much of a spoiler to say Colin will be back. Yeah. Yeah, well, okay. How many stakes would you give this finale? I'll give this three stakes. Okay. Because I did laugh out loud at Xander listening, listening to Patsy Cline. Okay. And I thought the banter between Xander and uh, and uh, Angel was kind of funny. Okay, I would go with four. Oh, I not definitely not my favorite season finale. Yeah, um, but I enjoy it. Yeah, I like I said, I did find myself. I didn't take as many notes. I found myself watching it. Right. So it must have had some good entertainment value for me. So yeah, three. Okay, maybe I'll give it three two five. All right, we got a quarter <laughs> quarter steak, just a splinter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I do feel like the quality of this compared to some of the earlier episodes is much better. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's... Oh. All right. I'm eager for season two because you tell me that once I got through season one, it was going to get way better. And I firmly believe in that. All right. There are some very good storylines, and I do think you're going to be hooked. It remains to be seen. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You 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 like it. It may not be your favorite show of all time. You're not getting tattoos I mean, it's yet. There's no Riverdale. But... No, it's a heck of a lot better than that. I know you agree. Is there a season not. season five tickle porn? No, no. Okay, good. that's unique to Riverdale. All right, good. But there's some weird weird stuff, but not not like that. Okay. All right. So next week we're gonna do um, a retrospective of season one. Yeah. All right. And if I can, I may throw in some uh, some bloopers, some okay. funny moments we've had Good. over the past 12 episodes. Okay. All right. So, yeah, that's it. And uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. If you can, please leave us a rating or review. If your podcast platform supports that, let us know what you think of this first season. Because we have... Several more to do. Yeah. Catch us on the socials. Instagram, Facebook, Threads, Discord, YouTube. I feel like every week you tell me you've added us to another uh, platform. Uh, I don't think so. What else is out there? We, we're not doing X. We're not doing X. So don't look for us there. No. Um, I mean, I don't know. There's Tumblr. <laughs> but I don't understand that. Uh, I, I feel we got the major ones covered. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Give us a shout on email. Yeah. The Sunnydale Diaries at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments. Or, yeah. Whatever. We're thoughts, open to it. Yeah. Ideas for anecdotes. You know, season two discussion topics. Yes. Um, or 
go to our website. TheSunnydaleDiaries.com. That's it. All right. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Bye. Bye.